All right, let's jump right in, shall we? A deep dive into the Dow. We've got some really fascinating stuff to explore today. Yeah. We've got excerpts from the Dao De Jing itself. We've got a lecture from Dao Master Chu Ming Fu. Oh, nice. And we've got some Western philosophical analyses, too. So, awesome. Uh, it's going to be exciting to see how these all kind of come together. It is. And I think Chapter 6 is a particularly good one. Yeah. It's just packed with so much symbolism. Yeah. Um really kind of gets at the heart of what the creative power of the Tao is all about. Yeah, and especially, I mean, you know, the concepts of the Valley Spirit and the Mysterious Female, oh, yeah. I feel like there's a lot to unpack there. Those are the two key concepts in the chapter. Yeah, and especially, well, you know how these ideas, I think, challenge uh, our typical Western notions of power and creation and the feminine principle, all that stuff. Right, definitely a different perspective. Yeah, so why don't we start with this idea of the Valley Spirit? Uh, chapter 6 of the Tao Te Ching says, The valley spirit dies not, I the same. I mean, just that imagery right there, mm -hmm. it kind of evokes this sense of enduring strength, resilience. What do you think about that, especially in the context of the Tao? Well, you know, in Taoist thought, the valley represents, um, it embodies the receptive and enduring aspects of nature. Yeah. It doesn't resist, right? It receives. So it's where water collects, it nourishes life, it allows it to flourish. So in many ways, I think the Valley Spirit represents that constant life-giving power of the Tao. Um, you know, it's a power that nourishes and sustains without force or effort. Yeah, it's like, uh, it's almost like unyielding strength, not like, through like dominance, but through resilience and adaptability. It kind of reminds me of um, what Dao Master Chao Meng Fu talked about in his lecture. Wow. He really emphasized that, you know, the valley as a metaphor for creation. And he says, actually, I'm just going to quote this. Being natural, being nature is the so most important thing of the idea of the town. Yeah, I mean, he really highlights that the valley represents the effortless creative power of the Tao, this effortless unfolding of potential this space for life to emerge and thrive. Yeah, yeah. And this is where I think um, the concept of the mysterious female is just so fascinating. Yeah. Uh, the Tao Te Ching describes it as, you know, the root from which heaven and earth grew, the gate from which all things emerged. Right. And this idea of the feminine as the source of creation, I think, is so powerful. And especially, you know, it really challenges, I think, typical Western views. It does, yeah. And, you know, the mysterious female really symbolizes that creative power of the Tao, but expressed through yin, right. which is uh, the receptive, nurturing, and yielding principle of the cosmos. So yes. femininity in Taoism is not passive or weak, right? but it's the very source of life and creation, right? right. It's the force that allows things to emerge and unfold naturally. Yeah. And we actually have a clip oh, perfect. from Tao Master Chu Meng Flo's lecture where he really dives into why valleys are such a powerful metaphor for this idea of creation. Yeah. So let's listen in on that. I think a lot of people kind of misunderstand Wu Wei as being passive. Oh yeah. But it's really not. It's not about being passive. It's really about aligning your actions with the natural flow of the Tao, um, acting with intention, but without force. So it's more like, uh, like dancing with the current instead of swimming against it. I like that analogy. Yeah. Yeah, Wu Wei is about, um, you know, understanding the natural rhythms of life and working with them rather than trying to impose our will upon them. Yeah. It's about recognizing that sometimes uh, the most effective action is to step back, observe, and just allow things to unfold in their own time. That makes sense, but it still sounds a little abstract to me. Yep. Can you give me like a, a more concrete example of how someone might actually apply Wu Wei uh, in a real life situation? Sure. So let's say, um, you're facing a conflict at work, right? Okay. Instead of immediately reacting or trying to control the outcome, you might practice Wu Wei by pausing, listening to the other person's perspective, and then seeking a resolution that benefits everyone involved. So it's not about like suppressing your own needs, yeah. but more about like finding a harmonious solution that just works with the, the natural flow of the situation. Exactly. Okay. It's about responding with awareness and intention rather than reacting out of habit or ego. Got it. Yeah. Wu Wei is about cultivating the sense of inner stillness and clarity so that we can respond to life's challenges with wisdom and grace. It's about letting go of the need to control and trusting that the Tao will guide us towards the best possible outcome. It reminds me of how the Tao Te Ching talks about, you know, the Tao's power is being used gently and without the touch of pain. It's mm -hmm. like it accomplishes its goals um, without force or struggle, you know, just by aligning with the natural order of things. Right. It's a subtle but profound power, like the force of gravity. 
Mm-hmm. You know, it's always present, it's always working, but it never imposes itself. Yeah. You know what? I'm starting to see how Wu Wei and the Valley Spirit are kind of interconnected. Oh, absolutely. Like, just as the Valley, uh, you know, it recedes and nourishes whatever comes its way. Yeah. Wu Wei kind of allows us to, to navigate those challenges with a similar sense of receptivity and adaptability. Exactly. Okay. The Valley Spirit embodies this principle of effortless action. Right. It doesn't resist the forces of nature. It adapts and thrives by working with them. It teaches us that true strength lies not in dominance, but in resilience, in our ability to bend with the wind without breaking. Yeah, it seems like this idea of, um, you know, working with the natural flow of things rather than against it is kind of a recurring theme in Taoism. Yeah, for sure. Taoism emphasizes this importance of living in harmony with nature, both within ourselves and in the world around us. Yep. Recognizing that we're part of this larger interconnected web of life and that our actions have ripple effects that extend far beyond ourselves. Right. Which makes me think about the concept of yin and yang, which is uh, so fundamental to Taoist thought. Can you explain how yin and yang kind of relate to these these concepts that we've been talking about? Yeah. Yin and yang represent the two fundamental forces that govern the universe. Mm -hmm. Right. Yin the receptive feminine principle right and yang the active masculine principle and mm -hmm. importantly they're not opposites okay but they're complementary forces that are constantly interacting and balancing each other so the mysterious female with its uh you know associations with receptivity and nurturing mm -hmm. would be considered an expression of yin exactly yeah? it embodies that yin principle the creative and nurturing force that allows life to emerge and flourish it's the fertile ground from which all things grow Okay, and how does Yang fit into this? Well, Yang represents that active, expansive force that brings things into being. So, you know, like the sunlight that nourishes the plants, mm -hmm. the wind that spreads the seas, the energy that drives creation forward. So they're like two sides of the same coin, like, you know, inseparable. And both are essential for the functioning of the universe. Exactly. Taoism teaches us that true harmony comes from finding that balance between these two forces, both within ourselves and in the world around us. You know, it makes me wonder, in a society that um, I think often overemphasizes yang, you know, like competition, achievement, control, mm -hmm. how can we cultivate more yin energy in our lives? That's such a great question and such a relevant one in our world today. Cultivating yin involves embracing qualities like receptivity, stillness, intuition, compassion, you know, slowing down, listening to our inner wisdom, nurturing ourselves and others. Are there are there specific practices that can help us do that? Oh yeah, absolutely. Practices like meditation, qigong, spending time in nature are all incredibly helpful in restoring balance and cultivating yin. These practices allow us to slow down, connect with our breath, and just tune into those subtle energies within and around us. So, I mean, it seems like the Tao Te Ching is really encouraging us to, um, to embrace a more, I guess, holistic view of ourselves and the world yeah. one that recognizes uh you know the interconnectedness of all things and the importance of finding that balance between yin and yang that's a great way to sum it up yeah yeah taoism offers a path to living in greater harmony with ourselves with each other right and with the natural world it invites us to let go of the illusion of separation and embrace the interconnectedness of all things. This has been such an eye-opening conversation. Yeah. We've explored the valley spirit, the mysterious female Wu Wei, the interplay of yin and yang. It feels like we've we've only just scratched the surface of of the wisdom contained in, in chapter six of the Tao Te Ching. Oh yeah, absolutely. The Tao Te Ching is a book you can come back to again and again and always find new layers of meaning. Well, I'm excited to continue our exploration in the uh, the final part of our deep dive, where we'll uh, you know delve further into some of the practical implications of these these Taoist principles for our lives. Okay, so we've been talking about the Valley Spirit, the mysterious female, this idea of Wu Wei, and I'm just I'm curious now, like how can we actually apply all this? How do we take these principles, this ancient wisdom, and integrate it into our you know modern lives? Well, and that's something the Tao Te Ching actually speaks to directly. Yeah. It's not just philosophy. It's like it also provides us guidance for how to live. Yeah. Um, and it all comes back to aligning with the natural flow of the Tao. Yeah. And it sounds like, you know, al aligning with the Tao isn't about becoming passive. Right. But it's more about like finding a different kind of strength. Yeah. Strength that comes from understanding and working with, you know, the natural order of things. It's letting go of that need to control and force outcomes, and instead trusting the process of unfolding that's inherent in the Tao. Like a gardener who 
understands the needs of their plants yeah. and yeah. provides the right conditions for them to flourish, but doesn't try to force them to grow in a particular way. So it's about recognizing that we're part of this larger ecosystem, mm -hmm. you know, and our actions have consequences that ripple outwards. Like we can't control everything, right. but we can choose to act in a way that, that promotes harmony and balance. Exactly. The Tao Te Ching reminds us that when we try to impose our will on the world, we actually often create resistance and suffering. Mm -hmm. But when we align our actions with the Tao, we tap into this source of effortless power. Right. And we create positive change. Okay. But how do we actually do that? Yeah. How do we even know if we're like aligned with the Tao? Well, I think a key practice is cultivating awareness. Okay. You know, paying attention to our thoughts, our emotions, our actions. And by doing so, we can start to see where we might be out of sync with the natural flow of life. So, you know, are we clinging to outcomes? Are we trying to control situations? Are we pushing ourselves beyond our limits? You know, these are all signs that we might be resisting the Tao. That makes sense. Yeah. So it's about being like mindful of our internal state and, and how that affects, you know, how we act in the world. Absolutely. And then when we notice that we're out of alignment, we can gently guide ourselves back to a place of balance. And this might involve things like, you know, meditation, spending time in nature, or even just taking a few deep breaths. Right. And reconnecting with that inner stillness. So it's really about like making these conscious choices that support our well-being. Yeah. And the well-being of, you know, everyone around us. Right. True power, according to the Tao Te Ching, lies not in dominance or control, but in cultivating harmony and balance in all aspects of our lives. It's finding that sweet spot where our actions are aligned with the natural order of things, mm -hmm. where we're effortlessly moving with the current and not against it. It brings us back to that image of the valley again. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't resist the forces of nature. It adapts and thrives because of its receptivity and resilience. Such a great metaphor for how we can navigate life's challenges. Yeah. Instead of resisting or fighting against difficulties, we can learn to bend like a willow in the wind adapting to change, finding strength in our flexibility. That reminds me of um, something Dao Master Chu Meng Fu said in his lecture. Oh yeah. About the importance of of being natural, of flowing with nature. You right. know, he, he was talking about how valleys are able to withstand like storms and stuff because right. they don't resist the the forces of nature. It's yeah. like they have this this innate wisdom right. that allows them to to thrive, you know, even in the face of adversity. It's a great point. By embracing our natural selves, aligning with the rhythms of nature, we really do tap into this source of wisdom and resilience yeah. that can guide us through any challenge. Well this has been a, an amazing journey through chapter six. It has. You know, we've explored some really profound concepts yeah. we've looked at you know ways to actually apply these in our own lives absolutely um so i hope that our listeners have found this as insightful as i have me too and i want to thank you so much for you know sharing all your wisdom and insights with us today it's been a pleasure and for our listeners you know keep exploring the Tao de jing you can return to it again and again mm -hmm. find new layers of meaning exactly and uh yeah until next time May you find harmony and balance on your own Taoist journey.